Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. He had always loved those in the world who were his own, and he loved them to the very end. Jesus and his disciples were at supper. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, the thought of betraying Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him complete power. He knew that he had come from God and was going to God. So he rose from the table, took off his outer garment, and tied a towel round his waist. Then he poured some water into a wash basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter. Are you going to wash my feet, Lord? You do not understand now what I am doing, but you will understand later. Never at any time will you wash my feet. If I do not wash your feet, you will no longer be my disciple. Lord, do not wash only my feet then. Wash my hands and head too. <laughs> Those who have taken a bath are completely clean and do not need to wash themselves, except for their feet. All of you are clean. All except one. Jesus already knew who was going to betray him. That is why he said, all of you except one are clean. After Jesus had washed their feet, he put his outer garment back on and returned to his place at the table. Do you understand what I've just done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and it is right that you should do so because that is what I am. I, your Lord and teacher, have just washed your feet. You then should wash one another's feet. I have set an example for you, so that you will do just what I have done for you. I am telling you the truth. No slaves are greater than their master, and no messengers are greater than the one who sent them. Now that you know this truth, how happy you will be if you put it into practice. I'm not talking about all of you. I know those I have chosen. But the scripture must come true that says the man who shared my food turned against me. I tell you this now before it happens. So that when it does happen, you will believe that I am who I am. I am telling you the truth. Whoever receives anyone I send receives me also. And whoever receives me receives him who sent me.
After Jesus had said this, he was deeply troubled and declared openly, I am telling you the truth. One of you is going to betray me. The disciples looked at one another, completely puzzled about whom he meant. One of the disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was sitting next to Jesus. Simon Peter motioned to him. Ask him whom he is talking about. So that disciple moved closer to Jesus' side. Who is it, Lord? I will dip some bread in the sauce and give it to him. He is the man. So he took a piece of bread, dipped it, and gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. Hurry, and do what you must. None of the others at the table understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas was in charge of the money bag, some of the disciples thought that Jesus had told him to go and buy what they needed for the festival, or to give something to the poor. Judas accepted the bread and went out at once. It was night. After Judas had left, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man's glory is revealed. Now God's glory is revealed through him. And if God's glory is revealed through him, then God will reveal the glory of the Son of Man in himself. And he will do so at once. My children, I shall not be with you very much longer. You will look for me, but I tell you now what I told the Jewish authorities. You cannot go where I am going. <laughs> and now I give you a new commandment. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. If you have love for one another, then everyone will know that you are my disciples. Where are you going, Lord? You cannot follow me now where I am going. But later you will follow me. Lord, why can't I follow you now? I am ready to die for you. Are you really ready to die for me? I'm telling you the truth. Before the rooster crows, you will say three times that you do not know me. Do not be worried and upset. Believe in God. And believe also in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. And I'm going to prepare a place for you. I would not tell you this if it were not so. And after I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to myself so that you will be where I am. You know the way that leads to the place where I am going. Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way to get there? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except by me. Now that you have known me, you will know my father also. And from now on, you do know him. And you have seen him. Lord, show us the father. That is all we need. For a long time.
long time I have been with you all. Yet you do not know me, Philip. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Why then do you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe, Philip, that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I have spoken to you do not come from me. The Father who remains in me does his own work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. If not, believe because of the things I do. I am telling you the truth. Those who believe in me will do what I do. Yes, they will do even greater things. Because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask for in my name. So that the Father's glory will be shown through the Son. If you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will obey my commandments. I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper who will stay with you forever. He is the spirit who reveals the truth about God. The world cannot receive him because it cannot see him or know him. But you know him because he remains with you and is in you. When I go, you will not be left all alone. I will come back to you. In a little while, the world will see me no more. But you will see me. And because I live, you also will live. When that day comes, you will know that I am in my Father and that you are in me, just as I am in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. My Father will love those who love me. I too will love them and reveal myself to them. Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, Lord, how can it be that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Those who love me will obey my teaching. My father will love them, and my father and I will come to them and live with them. Those who do not love me do not obey my teaching. And the teaching you have heard is not mine, but comes from the father who sent me. I have told you this while I am still with you. The help of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and make you remember all that I have told you. Peace is what I leave with you. It is my own peace that I give you. I do not give it as the world does. Do not be worried and upset. Do not be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am leaving, but I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I'm going to the Father, for he is greater than I. I have told you this now, before it all happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. I cannot talk with you much longer, because the ruler of this world is coming. He has no power over me, but the world must know that I love the Father, and that is why I do everything as he commands me. Come, let us go from this place. He left with his disciples and went across Kidron Brook. There was a garden in that place, and Jesus and his disciples went in. Judas, the traitor, knew where it was, because many times Jesus had met there with his disciples. So Judas went to the garden, taking with him a group of Roman soldiers and some temple guards sent by the chief priests and the Pharisees. They were armed and carried lanterns and torches. Jesus knew everything that was going to happen to him, so he stepped forward and asked them, Who is it you are looking for? Jesus of Nazareth. Judas the traitor was standing there with them when Jesus said to them, I am he. They moved back and fell to the ground.
Again, Jesus asked them, Who is it you're looking for? Jesus of Nazareth. I have already told you that I am he. If then you are looking for me. Let these others go. He said this so that what he had said might come true. Father, I have not lost even one of those you gave me. Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave, cutting off his right ear. The name of the slave was Malchus. Put your sword back in its place. Do you think that I will not drink the cup of suffering which my father has given me? Then the Roman soldiers, with their commanding officer and the Jewish guards, arrested Jesus, tied him up, and took him first to Annas. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had advised the Jewish authorities that it was better that one man should die for all the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. That other disciple was well known to the high priest, so he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest's house, while Peter stayed outside by the gate. Then the other disciple went back out, spoke to the girl at the gate, and brought Peter inside. Aren't you also one of the disciples of that man? No. I'm not. It was cold, so the servants and guards had built a charcoal fire and were standing around it, warming themselves. So Peter went over and stood with them, warming himself. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have always spoken publicly to everyone. All my teaching was done in the synagogues and in the temple where all the people come together. I have never said anything in secret. Why then do you question me? Question the people who heard me. Ask them what I told them. They know what I said. How dare you talk like that to thy priest? If I have said anything wrong, Tell everyone here what it was. But if I am right in what I have said, why do you hate me? Then Annas sent him, still tied up, to Caiaphas, the high priest. Peter was still standing there, keeping himself warm. So the others said to him, aren't you also one of the disciples of that man? No, I am not. But Peter denied it. One of the high priest's slaves, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, spoke up. Didn't I see you with him in the garden? No. And at once, a rooster crowed. Jesus was taken from Caiaphas' house to the governor's palace. The Jewish authorities did not go inside the palace, for they wanted to keep themselves ritually clean in order to be able to eat the Passover meal. So Pilate went outside to them and asked, What do you accuse this man of? We would not have brought him to you if he had not committed a crime. Then you yourselves take him and try him according to your own law. We are not allowed to put anyone to death. This happened in order to make come true what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he would die.
Pilate went back into the palace and called Jesus. Are you the king of the Jews? Does this question come from you? Or have others told you about me? Do you think I'm a Jew? It was your own people and the chief priests who handed you over to me. What have you done? My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom belonged to this world, my followers would fight to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish authorities. No. My kingdom does not belong here. Are you a king, then? You say that I am a king. I was born and came into the world for this one purpose. To speak about the truth. Whoever belongs to the truth listens to me. And what is truth? Then Pilate went back outside to the people and said to them, I cannot find any reason to condemn him, but... According to the custom you have, I always set free a prisoner for you during the Passover. Do you want me to set free for you? The king of the Jews? They answered him with a shout. Barabbas was abandoned. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him whipped. The soldiers made a crown out of thorny branches and put it on his head. Then they put a purple robe on him and came to him and said, Long live the king of the Jews. And they went up and slapped him. Pilate went back out once more and said to the crowd, Look, I will bring him out here to you to let you see that I cannot find any reason to condemn him. Look, here is the man. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Crucify him! Crucify him! Take him then and crucify him. I find no reason to condemn him. We have a law that says he ought to die because he claimed to be the son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid. He went back into the palace, then asked Jesus, Where do you come from? But Jesus did not answer. He will not speak to me. Remember, I have the authority to set you free, and also to have you crucified. You 
have authority over me. Only because it was given to you by God. So the man who handed me over to you is guilty of a worse sin. When Pilate heard this, he tried to find a way to set Jesus free. If you set him free, that means you are not the Emperor's friend. Anyone who claims to be a king is a rebel against the Emperor. judge's seat in the place called the Stone Pavement. In Hebrew, the name is Gabbatha. the day before the Passover. Pilate said to the people, Here is your king. Kill him. Do you want me to crucify your king? The only king we have is the emperor. <laughs> then Pilate handed Jesus over to them to be crucified. They took charge of Jesus. He went out carrying his cross and came to the place of the skull, as it is called. In Hebrew, it is called Golgotha. There they crucified him. And they also crucified two other men, one on each side, with Jesus between them. Pilate wrote a notice and had it put on the cross. Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews, is what he wrote. Many people read it because the place where Jesus was crucified was not far from the city. The notice was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. The chief priest said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but rather, this man said, I am the king of the Jews. 
What I have written stays written. After the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier. They also took the robe, which was made of one piece of woven cloth without any seams in it. The soldiers said to one another, let's not tear it. Let's throw dice to see who will get it. This happened in order to make the scripture come true. They divided my clothes among themselves and gambled for my robe. And this is what the soldiers did. Standing close to Jesus' cross were his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. Jesus saw his mother and the disciple he loved standing there. He is your son. Then he said to the disciple, She is your mother. From that time, the disciple took her to live in his home. Jesus knew that by now, everything had been completed. And in order to make the scripture come true, he said, I am thirsty. A bowl was there, full of cheap wine. So a sponge was soaked in the wine, put on a stalk of hyssop, and lifted up to his lips. Jesus drank the wine. It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Then the Jewish authorities asked Pilate to allow them to break the legs of the men who had been crucified and to take the bodies down from the crosses. They requested this because it was Friday and they did not want the bodies to stay on the crosses on the Sabbath since the coming Sabbath was especially holy. So the soldiers went and broke the legs of the first man and then of the other man who had been crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead, so they did not break his legs. One of the soldiers, however, plunged his spear into Jesus' side. And at once, blood and water poured out. The one who saw this happen has spoken of it, so that you may also believe. What he said is true, and he knows that he speaks the truth. This was done to make the scripture come true. Not one of his bones will be broken. And there is another scripture that says, people will look at him whom they pierced. After this, Joseph, who was from the town of Arimathea, asked Pilate if he could take Jesus' body. Joseph was a follower of Jesus, but in secret because he was afraid of the Jewish authorities. Pilate told him he could have the body, so Joseph went and took it away. Nicodemus, who at first had gone to see Jesus at night, went with Joseph taking with him about 100 pounds of spices, a mixture of myrrh and aloes. The two men took Jesus' body and wrapped it in linen cloths with the spices, according to the Jewish custom of preparing a body for burial. 
There was a garden in the place where Jesus had been put to death, and in it there was a new tomb where no one had ever been buried. Since it was the day before the Sabbath, and because the tomb was close by, they placed Jesus' body there. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been taken away from the entrance. She went running to Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved. They have taken the Lord from the tomb. and We don't know where they have put him. Then Peter and the other disciple went to the tomb. The two of them were running, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and saw the linen cloths, but he did not go in. Behind him came Simon Peter, and he went straight into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there and the cloth which had been around Jesus' head. It was not lying with the linen cloths, but was rolled up by itself. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in. He saw and believed. They still did not understand the scripture which said that he must rise from death. Then the disciples went back home. Mary stood crying outside the tomb. While she was still crying, she bent over and looked in the tomb. And saw two angels there, dressed in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been. One at the head, the other at the feet. Woman, why are you crying? They asked her. They have taken my Lord away. And I do not know where they have put him. Then she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Woman, why are you crying? Who was it that you were looking for? She thought he was the gardener, so she said to him, If you took him away, sir, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Mary. She turned toward him and said in Hebrew, Rabboni. This means teacher. Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet gone back up to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to him who is my father and their father, my God and their God. So Mary Magdalene went and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and related to them what he had told her. It was late that Sunday evening and the disciples were gathered together behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities. Then Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you. After saying this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy at seeing the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I send you. Then he breathed on them. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive people's sins, they are forgiven if you do not forgive them. They are not forgiven.
One of the 12 disciples, Thomas, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. Unless I see the scars of the nails in his hands and put my finger on those scars and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were together again indoors, and Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you. Put your finger here and look at my hands. Then reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop your doubting and believe. My Lord and my God. Do you believe? Because you see me. How happy are those who believe without seeing me. In his disciples' presence, Jesus performed many other miracles which are not written down in this book. But these have been written in order that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through your faith in him, 